we stood together and we have accomplished. We have endured. Our legacy is for all to see. It is a model community of Torah, Avoda, and Gemilus Chasadim. He himself was in a life experience in which he wanted to grow every minute of every day, and he wanted to see other people grow. So he was your Rav, he was your friend, he was your confidant, he was your teacher. He was a major figure in your life. I really appreciated his friendship more than I can tell you because he was my rabbi. He cared. And I wasn't used to having a friend that I could share so much of my feelings with. He cared about everyone he knew, and he loved everyone he knew, and he loved this community of, of non-observant Jews, for the most part, uh, who would learn from him every week. And not only do we learn Perkei Avot, which was kind of the, um, the title of these programs, but it was really about life. His life's work was about each individual he came in contact with. How could I help that person reach his heights? How could I help that person grow? How could I just help that person? That was Rabbi Wendt. He had such simcha sachayim. Uh, he's such amazingly um, easy person to talk to and always had a joke or could tell a story or relate an experience and do it in a humorous fashion so that it was easily understandable as well as enjoyable. Rabbi Winter had a very unique affectation. Whenever he would make a point, he would say, you hear? You hear? He was talking to us. He was asking us, do you hear? Not audibly, but are you internalizing what we're studying? Are you in the moment? Do you really hear? And that's a legacy that Rabbi Winter left. Listen, internalize. And that's become, I think, an important part of my religious life. I hope I hear. And that's how Rabbi Winter will stay with me. I got a call from Rabbi Winter's son, Menachem. Menachem went to the Rosh Kolel. And he called me and said, you know, my, my father told me about you and, and I'd love to get a chance to meet with you. And we, we set up a meeting and we talked and Rabbi Menachem went and I, we hit it off right away and he invited me to learn with him in the Kolel and since then I've been learning with Rabbi Menachem Winter uh, once a week, every Wednesday we studied together and it really all started because of Rabbi Winter. I'm certainly not Orthodox, I'm conservative, uh, but I have my own opinions of the importance of Judaism, of tzedakah versus this or prayer versus that and it was an unbelievable exhilarating back and forth discussion. And we would talk about international politics and we would talk about uh, uh, Islam occasionally and we would talk about uh, the future of mankind and uh, where's the planet going and things of the sort. Rabbi Winter stood for something. Yeah. You could agree or disagree but you knew where he stood and he would always articulate it. It was never personal, it was always a clear definitive way. You just learn by being in his presence, not just from what he was teaching, but how he taught it, how he conducted himself, how he held himself. He was not that much older than me. I think I figured six, seven years. But in terms of wisdom, in terms of stature, I, I certainly looked at him as a, as a father figure. I think Rabbi Winter believed very strongly in the concept of a pintaliyid. That in a Jew, if you can find it, there's a spark there's something, and that if you can ignite that spark, you'll bring somebody back to their people. You cannot know and learn from Rabbi Winter without being greatly affected, um, because he wants to reach out and touch your soul. That's what he wants to do, and he uh, did so with such love and compassion and intensity and intelligence um, that no one can go away uh, from uh, exposure to Rabbi Winter without being deeply affected. And even as sick as he was toward the end, he, he never stopped. The old expression, he died with his boots on. He was, he was still very active, very engaged, very concerned 
with the community in and of itself and with the individuals in the community. You know, I carry his voice around in my head with regard to so many different things that occur where I'm in need of a source of wisdom uh, or insight. He was my Rav, he was my first Rav, and I have no Rav now. And so that is a huge, huge loss to myself and my family. And um, it feels like a gaping hole. I miss not having. That's what I miss. I miss the casual conversations, I miss the formal meetings, I miss the involvement. Probably more, most importantly, I miss his influence, I miss his guidance. Um, you know, he was my friend. You know, he's my role model. It was a beautiful part of my life. I'm just sad that it came toward the end of his. Rabbi Winter was a very inspired and inspiring person. And he understood this very well, that the presence of a colonel in a community can do a great deal to, to raise the Torah quotient of a community. That he leaves over to the community to support Torah, to live in the presence of long day Torah, people who study the Torah. And it would certainly be a tribute and a schos v'hidnisham. The great pity of Rabbi Winter's passing at an early age is that he was robbed of the opportunity to bring people back into the fold. That was his mission in my, in my estimation. And of course, the task doesn't end with Rabbi Winter's passing. I think it devolves to all of us to do what we can in our own way whether it's supporting the kollel by bringing people to synagogue, by inviting people to Shabbat dinner, by supporting Jewish organizations. The chance to actually step into a real base madrash and learn with, with someone and learn the eon and, and really penetrate the depths of the Gemara and, 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 and almost like go back to yeshiva, go back to the yeshiva days, that's something that a, a kollel can provide and it's something that Rabbi Winter had a vision for. It's brought uh, serious uh, Torah study into my life day to day, and I think that's had a very positive impact. It's wonderful in a community like this if someone wants to learn, wants to be somewhat active in learning, not just sit and share where they're just listening, but they're not strong enough to learn independently. To be able to go, whether it be to some small learning group, whether it be a one-on-one -on -one chavrusa, it's a tremendous asset in the community. Uh, the caliber of the Jungleite who participate in the Kolo, Kolo was very, very high. I think they're first-rate learners and uh, very, very serious and bona fide Torah scholars. Rabbi Menachem Winters, uh, obviously a gifted, very, very gifted uh, teacher, um, which is to be expected because he sat at the dinner table with uh, a master. He attended shul with, you know, a person uh, who was absolutely extraordinary. And Menachem, in his own way, is that and will be that. You know, the, each one of the members of the Winter family, each one is a very special person in their own right. Um, and as a team, they're incredible. Um, and um, Rabbi Menachem Winter is uh, following in his father's footsteps, both in terms of the substance of what he's doing and in terms of his menschlichkeit and his gentleness and his firm conviction um, and in his life's work to help other people grow and develop and learn and become acquainted with Yiddishkeit at a deeper level than wherever they happen to be at the moment. He's getting nachas from watching the ladders and from watching people climb on the ladders. It's not about him. It's about those ladders. It's about those people. It's about growth. It's about everybody but Rabbi Winter. It's about the community continuing to grow and to continue to develop and the Kolel being an integral 
part of that growth.